kingdom ways. I've been thinking about how, how this kingdom is. You know, there's a different way that this kingdom we are in functions. So I, I'm so excited to ever delve into the word to find out more about this kingdom in which we are a part of. You know, we are set apart. There's, there's a difference in us. You know, we have, I was thinking we have the world's best, right? You know how there's the world's best something, I don't know. Oh, okay, I'll give a good example. Who here ever watched wrestling? <laughs> I saw some hand rise up very, very quickly. <laughs> Yes, okay, so um, there are some people who are aware of wrestling, right? So you know when they would come out, right? They would be like, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the world's best heavyweight champion, John Cena! Then you hear, You know, they would say that, right? But I imagine this in the kingdom. Just imagine it in the kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming Deaconess Beauty, the world's most spiritual heavyweight champion, full of faith, full of glory. You know, <laughs> we, are, we are the best. We are king. We are the kingdom's best. You know, we are the best of God's creation. I was thinking, we're surrounded by an innumerable company of angels. And you know, there are many watching us. There are many that have passed on the baton unto us. So they are also watching this. The same way, you know, in wrestling, there were spectators and they are lifting up their hands. They're like, yeah, I'm for John Cena. This other one is for that one. The angels are excited. Your angels are like, I'm for my angels. I'm for Evangelist TK's angels. I'm for Sister Diana's angels. I'm for Pastor, you know, they're like, I'm for Pastor Ime. You know, they're after you. They're like, yes, I'm watching you. The saints of old are watching us. And you know, I said, so how, how were some of these people who are in the crowd that are watching us today? You know, we are the best of God's creation and we are kingdom's best. So how are some of the people that were before us? What were they like? You know, they were but a shadow of the new creation. The new creation has all of that. You know, I was thinking, Daniel was excellent. You know, Esther rose up in her time. We are all of that in one. Because that was but a shadow of the new creation. So that means there's more in our hands. There's more in our kingdom. So we'll quickly breeze through the scriptures from Hebrews 11 and from verse 7. We're going to be quickly breezing through it from New King James Version. It says, by faith. So the currency in our kingdom, one of the currencies, there are different currencies, but one of the currency I'll zone in on with this scripture is the currency of faith. We operate by faith. Our king is pleased by faith. We operate in this kingdom, even in this world, and in that kingdom through faith. So faith is a principal thing that is required as we function in this kingdom. And you read here from verse 7, New King James Version, it says, By faith, Noah, being divinely... being div um, divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. Next verse, we're going to be breezing through very, very quickly. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place of which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of, prom of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, and heirs with him of the same promise. For he... for. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. You know, as we're reading through this, 
Take note, some of the qualities that these people had by faith. Take note, Abraham listened to the word of God. You know, take note of the qualities that they had in them. And those are in you. Take note, as you take note, don't just think Abraham was like this. They are in you and even more. And it goes on to say, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they have that they seek a homeland and truly if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out they would have had opportunity to return and then I'll skip to verse 17 by faith Abraham when he was tested offered up Isaac and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said in Isaac your seed shall be called concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, learning on leaning on the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of, of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ, of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked, he looked to the reward. And then for, I'll just skip forward again. I'll skip forward to, to verse to verse 20 to verse sorry to verse 30 by faith the walls of jericho fell down after they were enriched for seven days by faith the the harlot rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace and what more shall i say for time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, not subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to fight the armies of the aliens, Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still, others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. These are some of kingdom's best. These are some of the ones that are highly regarded in the kingdom. 
And it continues. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us. God having provided something better for us. That's what I was saying. That we've heard of all these people. But there's something greater for us. The new creation has this plus more. And it says that they should not be, that they should not be made perf perfect apart from us. But it's saying having provided something better for us. There's something better for us. You know, after having read of all the qualities of these different people, Abraham sacrificed. You know, I think of his great giving. I call it the great giving. Because, you know, Pastor has alluded to that great giving of his to the same way that God gave our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, what can you not give for the gospel? What is your giving for the gospel? As you are in the kingdom, we are ever advancing. You know, the world is advancing. The world is ever advancing. In the kingdom, advance. As you have earthly advancements, as you advance in the earth, advance in the kingdom. These people were always advancing in the kingdom. You know, what is so remarkable is they were all in constant fellowship with God. Ever confident, assured, and trusting in the word of God. So be ever sure, be ever trusting in God's word concerning you and wherever you are. You know, even as you see yourself in life, wherever you are, for example, I'm, I'm in school. I don't see myself as someone who is in school. I see myself as a savior who has come to school. I'm in that territory first as a savior. I'm a savior that has come from Mount Zion. You know, these people wrote great things. He says, they wrote righteousness. I want to, you know, I want to work righteousness where I am. I want to make sure righteousness is established wherever I am. Through my prayers, through my seeding of the word of God. Everywhere I go, I want everyone to be aware of this kingdom. Because we superimpose our kingdom into, the, into this world. So I'm going to be zoning in specially today about your kingdom goals. You are kingdom's best. Okay, yes. Now you have to have kingdom goals. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing is added unto us. Now what are your kingdom goals? You know, as I speak today, it's a provocation unto good works. So the Holy Spirit will be speaking to you about areas that you need to improve, areas that you can enhance. We are ever improving. So there's never arriving. There's never I have arrived. <laughs> always, always advancing. You know, there are kingdom goals that we set after. I think when I think kingdom goals, I thought of People like Mary, Mary and Martha. Mary had serious word goals, whilst Martha had worldly goals. Like there are different people who are set after a set target. And these are the people that do great things in the kingdom, just like the ones we've read about. I'll take us to the book of, um, I'll take us to the book of Philippians chapter 2. And from verse, from verse 19 in the message translation. So in the message translation, it says, I plan according to Jesus' plan. These are the words of Paul. Just those words, I plan according to Jesus' plan. Make your plans according to Jesus' plans. Make your goals according to Jesus' plans. 
What are your giving goals? What are your word goals? What are your prayer goals? You know, plan according to Jesus' plan concerning you. In your daily walk, plan according to Jesus' plan. Paul said, plan according to Jesus' plan. To send Timothy to you very soon. So he can bring back all the news, all, all the news of you he can gather. Oh, how that would do my heart good. I have no one quite like Timothy. You know, look at, look at what Paul says about Timothy. Just look at what he says. I have no one like Timothy. This is what God is saying about us. I have no one quite like Evangelist TK. I have no one quite like Brother Jonathan. I have no one quite like this. He is loyal. In the kingdom, we are loyal. We are loyal to a cause. And we are loyal to the king and his servants that he gives us. And genuinely concerned for you. He is loyal and genuinely concerned for you. Most people around here are looking out for themselves. With little concern for the things of Jesus. But you know yourselves that Timothy is the real thing. Timothy is the real thing. You can say that I am the real thing. <laughs> Beauty is the real thing. You know, we're not seeking after the world's things, but we are seeking after the things of Jesus. He said he seeks after the things with, with the things of Jesus. But you know you yourself that Timothy is the real thing. He's been a devoted son to me as together, me as together we've delivered the message. You know, he delivered the message. He was faithful in his witnessing of the gospel together with Paul. He was faithful in that. He was loyal in that. And he was not after his own things. He was after the things which are of Jesus Christ. So even when you go about your life, never lose sight. Never lose sight that you are after the things of God. That you are after the things which are of Jesus. So now you find out why am I placed here? Why am I in this generation? Find out why you are in this generation. The greatest thing you could ever do for yourself and for mankind is to walk in your purpose. And your kingdom purpose matters. Because in this kingdom, we are not a one man. This kingdom has joint parts. It's like a body. The hand can do what the foot does. My hand has not enough power to hold my whole body like this foot does. Or my legs do. So your functionality is the functionality of the whole body of Christ. Even as you set your goals, set kingdom targets. I was really, I was really joyous in my spirit when I saw a message from, from Lovewood, Australia. You can go and see if you haven't read it already. It came around 6.48 a.m. today. It said, it was saying that, don't be, it was, it was encouraging us. I can't say it word for word at the moment, right? But it was saying that do, like, do your most for days of bliss. Let, uh, let, let me actually read the message. Because this is exactly what the Lord was ministering to me. It said, beloved, it said, beloved, you are blessed. Don't hesitate to stretch your faith. Yeah, don't hesitate to stretch your faith. When it concerns the house of God, e.g. Days of Bliss 2024, never hesitate to stretch your faith. Never hesitate. Set goals that stretch you. Don't set goals that keep you where you are. Set goals where you're like, yes, this is stretching me. As Days of Bliss is coming up. Think, what can I do more? What else can I do? What did you do for Adelaide Weekend of Glory? What did you do for Super Weekend? What did you do for last year Days of Bliss? Add more to it. Stretch yourself. This is the life in the kingdom. This is the caliber that is in the kingdom. And that's the caliber where we are and where we belong. So always think, 
always think kingdom goals. As we advance, always remember, as you advance in the world, advance in kingdom goals. You know, Joseph is someone who advanced in kingdom goals, even though he seemed to be going in the opposite direction. He was imprisoned, ha, accused, different things, but he was advancing in the kingdom. That's why challenges never bring us down in this kingdom. These people who are in the whole of faith from Hebrews 7, from Hebrews 11, verse 7 downwards, they had challenges. It's not the first time challenges have come, but they were set on the goal. Their eyes were fixed on the price. So always have your eyes set on the goal. That's why a man of God always says, our eyes are set on Jesus Christ. You know, let your focus be on Jesus, even as things come. Refuse to be distracted from those things that God has set for you to do, even as we get to days of bliss. I'll also take us to the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and from verse 1. And I'll be ending there. So Ephesians chapter 4 and from verse 1. And we're reading that in the message translation as well. This is, these are the words of Paul as well. So from verse 1, it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. There's a calling by which we were each called. So we walk worthy of that calling. It says with all, sorry, I'm reading in the King James. Uh, let me switch to message. My device here wants to King James, but I would like to message. <laughs> because message is really, really sweet. It's just opening. Yes. Okay. Yes. We have it in message. Okay. I'll start reading. It says, in light of all this, here's what I want you to do. While I'm locked up here, a prisoner for the master... I want you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run. He says, better yet, run. You know, running has purpose to it. Running has energy conversions in it. When you run, there's energy conversions. He says not to walk, but to run. And you know, this life is alluded to as a race, that we are in a race. So he says, better yet, run. On the road, God, on the road, God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline. You know, there's something that I thought about when it comes to a race. It says, I don't want anyone sitting around. You know, when, when you find that you're about to run a long distance. So when, I'm not too sure if, me, I love athletics. I really loved running. So there was like things you had to do it, depending on the race that you're about to run. When you're running a short distance, right? You do the, on your marks, get set on your knees, right? You start on your knees, right? So you start sitting, sort of. That's a short distance. Because they are just running like 100 meters. It's a short distance. You can be sitting, stand up, run, finish, right? But when you're about to run 1.8, you can't start on your knees. You can't be sitting because it's a long race ahead. You start just like this. They tell you, you do the on your marks just like this, right? 
Yeah, you just do the on your marks, get set like this. You don't go on your knees. So never be sitting. We are always standing. So it says don't be sitting, but run this race because it's a long distance. It's not a short distance race. So never be found sitting. We are never found sitting. Never, never sitting or, or, or doing nothing, but advancing. And it says, I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline, not in fits and starts, but steadily. Pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love. Alert at noticing differences. Alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. Let's stop right there. Alert it, it says it says alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. This is something that we have sometimes in the house of God where there may be differences, but diversity is for beautification. Diversity is for perfection. So never let difference be an occasion of offense. Let differences spur the diversity in the house of God. Because we do have one mind. We have one set goal, even as we go towards days of bliss. Differences are not a place of offense. But differences can, can like, two people can have the, a different opinion, yet they have the same mind about something. So it's never a place of offense. It says instead, mending fences. So we create a bridge. Okay, I think this way, you think this way. What's the way forward according to the word of God? That's how we function in this kingdom. And it goes on to say, you were all called to have to travel on the same road. And that's the Jesus road. And in the same direction, to stay together, both outwardly and inwardly. This is why we pray together. And this is why we meet together physically. Because we've met together, we are here physically and spiritually, we're also together, even when we pray together. So it says together, outwardly and inwardly. You have one master, one faith. One baptism, one God, and one and and one God and Father of all, who rules over all, works through all, and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. These are the realities in the kingdom. This is what we have in the kingdom. So what I'd have you take home today is we function by faith in this kingdom. Set your kingdom goals. Don't advance in the world, advance in the kingdom as well. And faith causes you to advance. Where are you stretching your faith? Find somewhere to stretch your faith. If you don't read the word of God, if you don't have a habit of reading the word, stretch yourself in reading the word. Stretch yourself somewhere. Always be advancing. Always be on the move. Because we are the ones to set the pace even for the world. And also, we have one God, one faith. We are one. And as we go towards days of bliss, even keep this in mind. And always keep in mind that in this kingdom, all we do is for the king. Every single thing is centered around the king. We live for him. In him we live, move, and have our being. That's why Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I live in this kingdom. 
Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live now, I live in the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. These are some of the realities of our kingdom. So we're going to rise up now on our feet. We're going to be praying. You know, thank God for this life in the kingdom. Whatever you may be going through at this time, refuse to look at the mirage of challenges. Refuse to look at life's circumstances. Refuse to be held down by the world's ways. But always think advancement. Because we are unmovable, we are unshakable. It's from one level of glory to the next level of glory in this kingdom. Even as we pray, write down the goals that God has set for you. Write down the things that you want to stretch yourself in. You know, think about the caliber of those in our kingdom. Baliga anta sata baleja ba sali gradosha menta baliga ante sato jamanta bala anta sekata palo gemendo sega di jamanta palikra anta sekato jamenta palo gemendo prasikate zaliga anta balo jamanta sataba salon de frasca bala ante seloto prasuka Tija mendo zaga bala ba anta solonge vala kosa liga doje manta sekata paloja manta zega dija menta paliga anta sekato solonge mendo braskate jalenta prasukata mando balaga anta sataba we operate by faith we don't look at the things which are seen but we look at the things which are not seen for that which is seen is temporal but that which is not seen is eternal our eyes are set on the goal our eyes are set on our lord jesus christ maliga do shamanta sataba baliga anta sekate palo gemendo sekata liga anta sataba we are advancing in our prayer life we are advancing in our knowledge of the word we are advancing in our giving maliga Anta Sataba, we're advancing in our involvement in the house of God. Maliga do Shamanta Sataba, Leko Gemendo Palaga Anta, Paliga do Shemento Basikata. In you we live, in you we move and have our being. Maliga do Shamanta Sekate, Saliga Anta Balabadoja. We're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We are steady. We are steady. Balika anta sata balega doja. Mendo soto balika te. Shalika manta brason de sekaba. Balando sata balika anta. Lendo balaba doja manta sakata. Oh Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, because we are ever advancing. Thank you, Lord, because we function. We function excellently, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, because we operate by faith. Even like those in the kingdom, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, because we are not of this world. We don't behave like those of the world. Wherever we are, we are agents of change. Wherever we are, we are agents of advancement. We Thank you, Lord, because wherever we are, we work righteousness there. Salvation has come because we're in that place. We thank you, Lord, because indeed we're not held down by life's circumstances, but our lives are continually upward and forward. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if you're connected today and you know you're hearing this message for the first time and you're wondering how can I be a part of this kingdom being a part of this glorious beautiful kingdom is as simple as saying this prayer you can repeat these very words after me and everyone else can be speaking in tongues and praying for those who are about to give their lives to Christ repeat these very words after me say oh Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart 
in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me, and God raised him from the dead. I believe Christ is the Lord, is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I am now a child of God. Hallelujah. And wherever you are, if you've said this prayer, would love to be connected with you. You know, this life, you know, there's so much to know. Today, like it was, there was just a little taster of what is in this kingdom. There's so much more, so much more that God has in store for you and about your life specifically. So we would love to be in touch with you. So wherever you are, send forth a message with what platform you're connected if you're in the hall let an usher next to you know that you've given your life to christ today and we have a special gift for you as well and i'll just pray for you even now father in the name of the lord jesus we thank you for those that have given their lives to you today we thank you father that the name of the Lord Jesus is named upon them. We thank you because they're protected and preserved. Thank you because they continue to live the life of Christ in them, the hope of glory, O oh Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, because we bless them with your word. We declare that these ones are growing our right. We thank you, Father, because nothing shall pull these ones away from this decision that they've made today. Thank you, Father, because they continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.